Silvio and this is part 5 of my Christmas Village 2022 food tutorial series. I closed my last video telling you that the train task was complete. Yes! Green check! Let's go ahead with something else. The tracks are there, the supports, the bridge, the trestles slash pillars and the train is rolling smoothly on the tracks. But I forgot one small, little, futile thing. That under the trestles, under the tracks, there is something that is called, if I'm correct, water, uh, an ocean, a sea, and it is uh, still missing. I will need to paint the uh, sea uh, or ocean bed in blue, green, uh, all depend on the uh, depth uh, I wanted to give to the bed. Blue is more uh, deep, uh, green is uh, less uh, deep. Then I will need to add some cliffs, some rocks here and there uh, to have much more details. And for the first time I will use my rock paper to simulate the cliff in here. The water will be done using as usual some uh, crystal clear silicon or coke <laughs> acetic acid based uh, silicon so all along this video I will be practically intoxicated by acetic acid fumes and I will need to use a massive amount of silicon to fill all those 15 centimeters per 100 per two meters plus the harbor plus uh, the two little harbor so i will be saying stupid things more than usual along this video then then i will do some masonry work i still need to have some bricks uh, uh, all along the lateral walls of the stairs uh, I modified uh, a little the technique I've used last year to have some more uh, different types of bricks. Then some plumbing work. Yes, some plumbing work because I needed to add some pump and starting to think about the uh, pipes that will give life to my water feature. Uh, still not revealing the team, guys. And new techniques even there, use a new type of uh, pipes. And then, then I will probably close this video by uh, showing you a new type of uh, street lamp of a uh, Victorian slash steampunk street lamp. Um, and I want two street lamps on both sides of the lateral walls, sorry, and not say it correctly. I want a street lamp on the left and on the side and on the right of the stairs, in plain middle of the lateral walls. And this will be a steampunk, a couple of steampunk street lamps. I've designed them all along this uh, past week. I still need to add some more little details, but it will come all along to this building uh, process. So that's all I think. Yes, let's get to work. I will start by the stairs, I think, by the masonry that needed to be to dry out the, the glue need to to dry before I can start doing the street lamp and everything else. So, as always, let's change the scenario. The masonry, guys. I will need to add some bricks on this wall here and on this other wall here to simulate a real uh, wall. I could have designed it with simply my, drawn it, sorry, with simply my pencil but I prefer adding some real bricks 
how I do my bricks. And generally I use uh, some two centimeters, two centimeters per nine millimeters, so 20 millimeters per nine millimeters, having a thickness of three millimeters. But the wall will be too regular in this way. So this year I cut some two centimeters, 20 millimeters by nine millimeters, but some have three millimeters in thickness, some have four millimeters in thickness, some others have 4.5 millimeters in thickness. This will give a more realistic wall, a more Victorian era a wall where the dimension were cut by cut by last measurements when they uh, were handmade. Okay, and this is too regular, so the uh, the angles are too abrupt. Okay, the corners are too abrupt. So I used my shredding machine, as you know, bigger than last season, where I have the bricks inside that if I compare them both of them there maybe I will put them here and you will see the difference with the corners that are more rounded I can get some other samples so in the middle uh, let's get this one okay on the middle, I have a more squared corner sample, the original, and then on the left and the side, some wall, some bricks shredded by the uh, little rocks, the pebbles I have inside here. Very, very loud machine, very basic machine, but this way I don't have a brick uh, similar to another one and they are all aged properly with some holes in them and you can see that the thickness is different this is 3, this is 4.5 millimeters. I will use all those um, all those bricks to clear the, um, the walls I will start then most probably I will just uh, forward uh, to the to the end because it's very simple. So I generally start by having bricks on the top. Uh, sorry, on the bottom here. Then I will go up. So large, narrow, large, narrow, etc. Let me do a test. Some some white glue. I could have done this with some. Um, super glue but this is less dangerous it will take longer to uh, dry but it's way less dangerous so some bricks here and i will go some glue and then Okay, and after one long break, I go with half a brick Then another long brick.
and where I start the next level, I will continue obviously, and, but the second level, where I started with a long brick, I will start with a half brick. And then a uh, long brick, a full brick. And so on until I reach the top, guys. Okay, so long short and near short long then short then long etc up up um, line by line layer by layer and i will show you the result in some in some hours i think this will take me hours to complete i think at least two hours Alright guys, it is time to start painting the sea slash ocean bed I have here, so 15 centimeters by 200 centimeters, so 2 meters. I've also protected the borders there with some paper because I don't want to stain the plywood that is directly under this, this first uh, little uh, styrofoam panel here. Uh, I will go just with this corner because hey, guys, it is the same technique all along here and I don't want to uh, bore you. I've prepared the different shades of green here, light green, dark green, and same thing with blue, light and dark blue. Um, lighter colors are less deep, uh, darkest color are deeper. What I mean for with that, if I paint something green, it's not that deep. The water is not that deep. If I paint it blue, it is much more deeper. Then after the painting, I will add the um, the rock paper, then some um, rocks, some cliff before adding the water. The crystal clear uh, silicone or cork uh, so light green here with some shades of green going deeper but as i have here the 
uh, Byron's the Fresnels, uh, these need to be at the same age. So maybe some more blue here um, with the deeper color there and the some green. Anyway, this is just, it, it doesn't need to be perfect because it will be covered by, um, by silicone. I just don't want to uh, have a gray or white color under the silicone, okay? So I will start with some uh, green and I will start with some light green and I will go slowly and passing through. Uh, I will get here and I will start painting. Okay, I think it is done. I need some white spot here and there because I will also need some white spots under the silicone under the water. Then the water would be not at all cold, but as always, this is a winter village, so winter village needs a very agitated uh, sea ocean. Okay, so big waves rocks, cliffs here and there, I will add them, I will glue them together with some uh, um, PVC glue, uh, but it's for, for, let's see, let's say one hour, two hour, I will leave these to dry as long as possible, and then I will add something, maybe also some sand here and there. Two hours later. Uh, I will add something more to the uh, seabed there. I have here one big piece of black rock. Okay, and here I have a white slash, uh, which I think this is some, uh, oops, it doesn't get to focus. Okay, and I will place them on the bed, as I told you. And then I will also use some sand. Okay, I have some sand. This, this is simply aquarium sand. Um, I've used it last season also, but I will not make a beach. Um, I will use it as a supplement for the uh, seabed because uh, it's not just uh, algae and uh, water the uh, bed, it's rocks, obviously, but also some uh, sand. I will try to uh, see uh, what I can get with the sand under the <laughs> silicone, but tomorrow. I will need to let dry the glue. I also prepared a mix of uh, water and the PVC glue here that I will uh, spray on top of the sand. Mm -hmm. 
Well guys, many, many hours later, the glue has finally dried out correctly, the rock is stable, the sand too is perfectly glued. Uh, a little change of plan here guys. Uh, previously I told you that I would have used my rock paper all along these 12 cm tall wall here, all along the sea bed. But uh, the wall here is too regular, too straight, impossible to have a, such a, a straight a wall in nature. It has to be man-made to be realistic. So the rock paper can't be used in this case. Maybe just in this corner here to join this section here to the uh, to the seabed, to the water here. Yes, here I will use my rock paper. But all along the wall that is uh, behind the, the railroad here, I needed to find, I, I needed to find a different solution. It is man-made, so I've decided to go with a new texture uh, and a new wall. This is the result, guys. This is a 12 centimeters by 20, 21 centimeters, I think, yes, no, 29 centimeters, sorry. And uh, um, it is uh, somehow uh, concrete, man-made, here you have some concrete, then a degradation of concrete uh, going uh, down towards the water, uh, some... Uh, uh, residual from the uh, the tide here and some uh, um, moss here so the um, the concrete is a little ruined but it is aged man-made and I will go like that all along the 12 centimeters per 200 and then also the arbors in the corner and down there I will show you exactly the result on during my uh, final recap and yes, this is correct for those section here. I just made some cuts here uh, on the first piece here. I have cut it here and here because here I have the trestles going, the trestle going under the wall, and here I have nine millimeter of thickness due to the um, to the uh, tracks support here. So this will be the first uh, piece I will glue and generally I use a white glue on the back and the white glue on the wall. A little difficult here to reach because I just have those three, four centimeters here to get the, the brush on the wall, but hey, it's time to start. The wall all along the seabed is done, guys. Now it is time to start getting intoxicated by silicon, guys. I will use silicon in junction with this pigment here. It is blue and it is a silicon pigment because I need the crystal clear silicon to be, yes, transparent, but also bluish. So I will add some, let's say, three, four drops of uh, uh, this pigment in every batch I will prepare. I will use some other tools. I will use those uh, wood sticks here to mix the um, silicone and the pigment here. Then I will uh, use also them to put the silicone on the bed and I will use as usual, uh, sorry, uh, a spoon to get the effect I want. I will start uh, getting to work on the corner, then I will complete and get intoxicated in the next, I think, four hours. Okay, let's start.
plumbing. Let's do some plumber work. Uh, and the silicone is still curing. I'm really intoxicated right now, but anyway, let's go. This is the base for my first water feature, as you know. The depth, the total depth here is 6.5-6.4 centimeters. So I need to have water, I need to have a pump, this is a mini pump. I modified it a little bit because this was supposed to be a USB uh, pump, so it needed a USB port to be powered. But anyway, just two positive and negative wire. I just removed the original USB plug and replaced it with my standard 5.5 by 2.1 millimeters um, plug. I was saying, the pump, uh, not very powerful, this is just uh, 200 liters per hour and the, just 3 watt of power. But guys, this is very, very silent. I tested it once and I can even hear it. Very, very silent. And I don't need a very powerful pump to do what I want for this um, uh, feature here. I just need a good enough pump to pump some water. And it operates between 3.5 and 8 volts with the ability to get more, less or more um, uh, water through the pump. Okay, so the water will get in from this side and go up there. So I will most probably place it like that. This is the front, this is the back. But here I have just 6.5 centimeters. The first time I use... <coughs> sorry. <laughs> and the, <coughs> the acetic acid fumes are still hitting me. And this is the first time I use uh, such a uh, short uh, base, so the short container for my water feature. And generally I use, and you know it, this tube here, this pipe here. It is PVC, crystal clear PVC with a diameter of uh, one centimeter uh, external or eight millimeter internal diameter. But somehow this is very stiff. Look at, if I wanted to change direction, I need at least to go this way. Let me just do. If I wanted to change direction, I can, it will put a very high amount, a very high force on the pump, you can see it, and I risk to get this problem here, the clogging of the pipe using this. So normally for going smoothly and changing direction from uh, 90 degree direction, I would go, I would need to go this high and then change direction. Very effective, very adapted to this kind of pump here. Just need to use a simple hose clamp here and it will be done. Problem, I don't have this aid here. I, it is too tall to use this system. So I have to find a new solution. Not easy, not easy. I researched online, but I wasn't able to find anything. Then, as usual, I sometimes I go to hardware stores, big hardware stores. Um, maybe you have seen one of them in one of my previous video. I don't know, maybe in 2020. Um, but anyway, I went to uh, to an hardware store, big, very big garden and hardware store, and I find I found a solution. 
uh, for those of you who have the chance to have a, a vegetable garden or a garden maybe you have already seen this kind of uh, things so if you have a vegetable garden or small garden and you needed to do irrigation you need to do watering uh, you don't use big, big, big tubes. Yes, you may use them, but in general, you use small pipes. Very flexible, guys. And this is a pipe used in gardening. And look at how soft, at how bendable it is. Yes, it's only between four and six millimeter of diameter so impossible to use it with this pump okay impossible i should have gone this way but then no way to fit sorry you are empty. maybe getting inside here but then no way to fix it this is hard at last so i decided to use this even if i had to adapt in some out uh, a little bit and uh, I will go with this pipe here but not as it is when you use this kind of pipes for irrigation for watering they come with very useful useful connection a couple here I hope you can see them okay a couple here Th those are 90 degree 19 degrees, 90, sorry, degrees uh, corners. They make possible to have the water going vertically and then horizontally. And if I place it directly like that, I will get a change of direction with no space at all. Okay, guys, poof. And I will get through it. So I will use this, but I need a way, I need to find a solution to get it done and then I will surely need more than one pipe for my uh, feature for my water feature so I need a way to split the water and this system here comes even with those splitters here I would have preferred to go with a uh, three-way splitter, so one in and three out. And just a second, like this one, guys, the different here is one in, two out, here it is, one in, three out, okay? One in, three out. The problem with this kind of splitter is that the um, the flow the water flow tend to go straight so I add the water getting inside but 80% coming from here because it is straight here and just 20% so 10% here and 10% there not very effective so this would have been great for my uh, water feature because I need three uh, water uh, pipes, three, wa three different water sources. But no, I had to choose this one. So one hand to split. So the water comes in here, get on a wall, and then the water split 50-50 right and left. Nothing uh, uh, is uh, uh, telling me not to use uh, another coupler after some way so one here then this goes here and then splitting once again in two ways very effective and it is adapted here as you can see that it is adapted you can insert there and you don't have to use any clamps because this will go inside the water even if you have some um, drops uh, coming out from the pipe not mm, no uh, no problem at all this is supposed to be irrigation so under it it may be something here and even if it goes down so 
no need to use some uh, some uh, clamps uh, but I could use some uh, zip ties if I wanted I could use some zip ties now I need to go from this at, with the smallest space possible with the small height possible uh, from vertical to horizontal using this one but this is a very adapted for the dimension here so I will use also this one here okay I forgot a marker okay got it so let me cut let's say 2.5 centimeters of this crystal clear PVC pipe here okay this is 2.5 centimeters that will be maintained that will be always straight a straight piece then I'm going this way okay so this is 2.5 centimeter but I also need a piece of this flexible material those are uh, beverage straws but not made in plastic those are silicon uh, straws I can show you one big one big one <clears throat> like this green one here so straws for parties etc already curved there you cannot bend it more but they, those are flexible yes but also washable and you can also have this and the show continue to get functional okay so for parties it is very very well adapted but it is also washable so you can use them and it is also chewable guys <laughs> a very fun toy for uh, kid, kids party um, uh, a piece of this straw here And then this goes there. So I went from vertical to horizontal in here getting just and you can see just four millimeters even less even less maybe four millimeters over the edge but I can manage it this I, I can manage it to uh, to get to hide it now I will use a little piece of this pipe here once again I will cut it let's cut straight enough and then let's say this and I will go from one two two and this will be possible to get down bring down fix it in somehow and then getting one pipe here on my feature or even getting this direction here like that 
So impossible to do with this one here because getting there, then you, you see it is not manageable with this one. But this one here, this little beauty here, is very flexible. I can approach even here and the tube is bended correctly, not clogged at any, at any time. And it will go there. I will use this piece and then one pipe from here, another piece of this black pipe coming out here, another here, one jumping on one side of the feature, one jumping on the other side of the feature, and the pipes will be hidden behind what I will have in here. I will not tell you guys. Secret, big secret, big shocking secret, very shocking. And maybe at a certain point I will split this one uh, in two in order to get another cup or, or source. And this is plastic, this is uh, a flexible uh, PVC, I think it is PVC. Yes, it's PVC but very, 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 very flexible. And it can be glued there. This will be placed there. Okay guys, so this is a new technique, a new way of getting uh, um, water in a water feature and getting it done having the pipes secretly hidden anywhere. Imagine that I will cover this with some silicone with some water. Here I will surely have a little case here simulating a rock in there or even here uh, I will simulate something in here. I still don't know it right now. This is just the beginning of this feature that I will go completing next next time, guys. But this is the starting point. You know that I must start many tasks at the same time, then complete them them one by one before after starting obviously some new uh, tasks. Um, I will need to fix because it. I don't think it will resist in this place. So, in order to fix the pump there, let me just remove this. I will not use. It. I will use a couple of zip ties. I will show you guys how I will do this. I will use it like this to fix under here okay good then I will also use a couple of <laughs> these sticks here that you already know but I will use them in this way. And I will use some super glue to attach them plastic with plastic. I don't want to glue the pump directly to the base, to the container, to the food container. No, I will go with this solution here. A couple of these, of those one here. This one going the opposite way. Like this. And the to stick and like that and then glued there in place. It will have to maintain the pump where it needs. But this will not generate too 
a, a, a very high amount of forces against the, um, the retention there because this is not a very powerful pump, but I don't need a very powerful pump. Okay guys, you wanted to see it in action. I just bring some water, just let me bring some water. Okay, here I have some water. Not enough. Then here I have a plug, power cord, and let's go, guys. Okay, not powerful as I was telling you, but look, guys, it can even go. Okay, I just need a very small amount of water getting where I want it to go. And this is 50 and 50. Obviously, if I continue this way, and these guys, it's not perfectly uh, sealed, but I don't care. The water I need to go inside. I just don't want the water to spl <laughs> split everywhere. But if I have a small amount of water getting there, well, I couldn't um, uh, get more, uh, I couldn't uh, screw it more to s here, otherwise I will break inside. But guys, here it is how it will work. Splitted water and I can go even in 8 and the pump is still pumping water. My uh, feature will be maximum this tall here and the pump is capable to get the water up this 8 here too. With a small amount, and if I I make some silence and do with the water here, you can't hear the pump pumping. Very silent pump. Okay. This is uh, between three point five and eight volt. And I've set the power supply to 3.5 volt. I don't, I don't remember. Let me check. It is set to 3 volt. But if I go to 4.5 volt, okay, because I can go anywhere. So I was operating under the minimum power of the pump and if I go there the power has increased guys you can see that it is going much more distant the water is flowing much more distant okay So this is how to start a new type of water feature, guys, with the pump, with a silent pump. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And, uh, okay, let me go, let me do a trick there. If I decide to go this way I have three ways one one in three out this is double the power of this one and this one obviously okay so now now uh, the Victorian Steampunk Street Light. Once upon a long time ago, there was a little plastic dollhouse 
street lamp. This little one, guys. Completely plastic, completely useless, only adapted to door houses. And also very short. And you know that I always adapt. I always try to adapt. So you already know that from this lamp here, street lamp here, I went to this street lamp here, taller, using the base, using the top, and with inside an LED, a 5mm round LED light emitting diode. diode. 3 volt, so if I get a power supply of 3 volt, these get powered on. From this to this with an aluminium pipe, a 8 mm diameter aluminium pipe to uh, simple wires, a plug, an LED and some and a soldering station obviously. Um, this is aluminium, okay guys, and I went with this solution for three years. But aluminium is not that workable, okay? It's very stiff, it is also somehow heavy, and it is adapted for a street lamp. I couldn't go with this street lamp here because it would have been shorter than the standard figurines. Figurines are six between 6 and 6.5 centimeters tall. This is 10 centimeters, 12 centimeters tall. This is uh, 14 with the washer, so the washer will be hidden under the surface, so this is 14.5 centimeters tall street line. Impossible to work because I will need to uh, do a lot of work cutting, um, so soldering with no with uh, different type of soldering station, etc. Too many amount of work impossible to do and uh, to adapt in any other shape of this one. Maybe it, it is somehow obscure the last sentence I've used, but impossible to modify the shape of, a, of an aluminium pipe very easily. But the same pipe here come in PVC, guys. PVC. PVC is polyvinyl color, is a plastic, is a polymer, and its characteristic is that it is amorphous. Some Greek word, what does it mean? Uh, amorphous, so amorphous. It is written A and then morphous, okay? In Greek, a stands for privative, so eliminate something that is after. Morphus is shape. So amorphous without shape. It means that they have um, made it like this, but it can also get another shape. And it still will be it, it will it still will be functional. How to modify the shape of this pipe here if I press, if I push, if I see it, I broke it, I can cut it, no way, but if I want to give it a four, give it a four. Uh, it can be done, yes. If I want to bend it, I will use some heat. Sorry for the barking, guys. Not my dog, sorry. Um, in this case, I will go with a heat gun here. 
I will use it on the corner there. But you can also get the same result with an air dryer, for example. No need to get too, um, too hot. I will switch on the heat gun and I will go on top of the heat gun with my little piece of PVC. Not yet enough. And you just need to avoid to burn it. Okay. Let's see. Okay, it is bendable. You can see that it is bendable already. Okay. Here, stiff, here, bendable. Let me just go with some heat it because I wanted to explain you something. Okay. If I want to get a 90 degrees shape like this, I can do it, okay? Let's wait for some seconds. Okay, I will switch off the heat gun for a moment. Good, I got a 90 degrees shape here, almost 90 degrees guys, you can see. But, what happened here? A deformation, here. So, not very good looking guys, absolutely awful looking, because when bending, uh, uh, the cohesion between the atoms is Let's rephrase it, Wait. let's restart the, the sentence. When I hit it, I go, with, I go towards its initial state. This plastic here is at high temperature, at uh, high temperature it is fluid. So this is how a pipe, uh, such, uh, this one is formed. I have a, a container with very hot PVC in fluid state and I will push it towards a hole with a pin inside, okay? So this will make a pipe, a pin inside with some difference of diameter and it will get extruded. This is an extruded pipe. But when I reheat the pipe, it tends to go fluid once again and fluidity is the state where there is no precision cohesion between atoms. So that's why it tends to go there. Yes, I can bend. I can show you that I can bend, it's telling me the pipe. But the atoms will go where they want. And once they regain solid state, because it cools down, you will have a ruined pipe. A new. Yes, I could also use it like this, but I don't want it is true. But I will get it. I have another piece of pipe here. Follow me well, it is very easy. I will go with some paper tape, mask tape if you prefer. And I will go this way. Then I will get a funnel. funnel. Group, like this, and then here I have some sand, <laughs> the same sand I use it for my uh, seabed, my ocean bed, and I will fill the pipe like that. Okay, too much. Okay. Let's say it is enough. Let me just check the camera. Good. Now, let me do this. Okay, I filled the pipe with sand. Let me switch on again the heat gun. Almost, he 
identical angle guys okay but with way less deformation you can see the difference guys there okay I went 90 degrees once again with a more regular shape a curved section and a curved section yes something but the sand inside gives stability to the shape of the pipe it is no more empty inside so it will not have a space to collapse like in this case and the shape is almost there I just need to do this and to do this and use the pipe using maybe inserting inside some wires like in this case so guys new technique i want to show you each time some new techniques when i can i will use this exact same technique to build my personal version of a victorian steampunk street lamp Okay.
right guys so this is the first of the two uh, street lamps uh, steam pack street lamp I will do for the uh, stairs uh, I still need to go here with a pipe that will go down with another thing with another manometer here but I will need the first to go and do another one of these then um, I will uh, attach them to the stairs but uh, this took three hours to build and it's still not complete I need to wait for the glue to to um, dry to cure once more okay but this is a first steam punk uh, street lamp see you for the final recap guys and the final recap of part 5 of the 2022 series guys i will start from the stairs there with Jay already checking my work there on the wall and this is the result using this season not one simple thickness of bricks but three different thickness three millimeters four millimeters and 4.5 millimeters three hours of work just for both the sides there and I think this will get a very different look to the stairs, a more realistic look. Just keep in mind that at that time during the Victorian era or even before, bricks weren't done in uh, factories. They were made by hand. So precision, yes, almost precise, but not that precise some tolerance was admitted but once painted here with all these different the shadows that they will uh, project the um, the bricks on the bricks that are just below them will be a very good effect i think uh, final thing to do is to paint everything still need to decide what color guys also here i still need to cut here because now, right now it prevents the stairs to get in touch with the level, the third level there. I still don't know with which color to give to the uh, stairs, but uh, it has to be made. Uh, maybe some suggestion, guys. So now, oh yes, uh, I know I should uh, show it to you by... Um, in the very last minutes but this is the street lamp the new type of street lamp uh, still need to be painted yes still need to do another one of them but my first intention was to get it right there on this wall here but guys uh, it is huge as any uh, uh, street lamp will be it has the same eight almost the same eight of a normal street lamp but it will completely ruin the look of the stairs but instead if i place it like that okay with the street lamp giving um, uh, illuminating the third level there and also the down below level with some uh, i maybe i will need to shorten uh, this curve here is too long. I will need to cut here. Uh, it can be done without dismantling everything. And then I will place it like that. Okay, and one from this side and one from the other side there. Okay, and uh, still need to be painted, as I said. Uh, metallic color okay and then once it will be in there i will have another pipe coming down here with a larger diameter going in the ground with another manometer 
and another uh, big valve to close it. So these will need someone to uh, operate it as everything, but uh, maybe a lamp lighter, a new type of lamp lighter. But hey guys, this is Steampunk. Um, the uh, wheels there will be painted in red, I think, okay? And yes, it is very big, but you can't get something smaller having a decent look with the dimension, with the head here, with the dimension of uh, lead inside. And uh, this is two centimeters, guys. This is two centimeters and it needs to be to have a certain shape maybe giving it uh, uh, no uh, this is the correct dimension for this little guy big gigant gigantic guy but one of these will replace three of the others and i've used some uh, white lead but not uh, normal LEDs, they, they, those are uh, foggy LEDs because three in a row there, one, two, three, one beside the other will have made a, a tremendous amount of light uh, if I uh, use it, the standard uh, high uh, luminescent white or LED. The pump. Uh, the pump is there, ready. Uh, it is right here at this level here. I don't care because uh, I can uh, sacrifice, <laughs> let me use that term, another five millimeters of eight there. But it will get uh, very interesting starting from next part where I will be revealing some of the piping. <laughs> I will do that. Still two two parts before revealing the full feature there. I will work also in here and I will try to uh, paint uh, all around the water feature here and then protect the painting because I will certainly have some uh, water spilling because the feature will be uh, or will go over the next level there. Here I have some of the spare, uh, here I have some spare parts, I used some spare prints, sorry, I used it to make the wall, that it is right there and all along. And also the silicone has dried a little bit, yes, not entirely dried, but here it is, uh, it is uh, uh, simulating, I think, in a certain way better than last season the water but the real effect is when I go right at this level guys look at the waves and at the agitated waters I have in here guys so this is the effect I wanted for uh, this season I've used sometimes some um, green pigment on the silicone sometime i've used some blue pigment but here the, the other cliff in here i still needed to paint the uh, the silicone with white because i want white um, um, waters but i don't think it is a, a no full result guys okay and even there with, I don't know if I can get on focus there, guys. Okay, with the uh, wall in here, I still need to paint some little gray in here because it isn't perfect, the junction between the two pieces. Uh, but also the arbor uh, with the, <laughs> uh, the place for the boat and the other boat will go there. And also here, guys, the waves. And the result. Using the silicone in this way, always get a decent result, guys. Uh, I'm still intoxicated. I can't deny it. 
still intoxicated, but this is the result. And the sand, okay, sometimes I use the sand. Also, not bad to use the sand sometimes. Uh, green, algae are green, algae are blue, uh, different colors in there. I have used all along <clears throat> the wall here some more, uh, some a little more of sand. Uh, I need to go there, otherwise it won't get in focus on focus. Uh, maybe like that. No, it isn't visible the sand, but you have. Sorry. You have the sand all along the wall and etc. Um, I don't know, guys. Uh, of all the process of all the task of adding the um, the silicon there took me for almost five hours to complete, guys, and I used a total of. Uh, uh, two, four, six, eight, 12 cartridge, 12 silicon cartridge to get this result. Um, it almost dried out, yes, it has almost dried out. I can touch everything, okay. And this wall is well adapted for an arbor and for a seaside industrial slash steampunk. Um, uh, village not entirely but at least there uh, I will need to clean uh, some of uh, the silicon I got in here but the silicon luckily doesn't stick to the paper so I can easily remove it okay uh, so that's all guys uh, it seems I haven't done too much especially because I haven't completed the two um the two uh street lamps there <laughs> i did a lot of time consuming task the, for this part and i just have two ends <laughs> okay sorry guys let me replace here jay checking once again the wall in there maybe this way and it will say Hi guys, uh, so thank you and I will see you for my outro in just a few seconds, bye. I sincerely wish I could have more time to spend on my Christmas village guys, but unfortunately I have a job. All the tasks you have seen in this part of 5 are extreme time consuming, just the simple task of finding a new wall to place behind the support here all along the sea bed there took me two hours not placing it on photoshop and going ahead but finding the right seamless image a seamless image is an image that you can place it one beside uh, itself many many times and it doesn't give you the impression of a collage but of, uh, con of continuity. Two hours to do this, <laughs> the bricks, the silicone, uh, everything took an took, um, exaggerated uh, amount of hours. <laughs> the street lamp, three hours to complete it. <laughs> Sincerely, I, uh, I thought I would go on with five to six hours to build it, but I was lucky in this case. One thing is uh, drawing it and uh, developing it on your 3D software. One other thing is to uh, get real and build it uh, with the materials you have on hand and not the materials proposed by your 3D software. Anyway, this is uh, how I am today. Not bad, I think not perfect as always i will never be perfect uh, still needed to do another um, another street lamp and everything else uh, what else to say please don't forget to subscribe comment and give big thumbs up 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English. And see you next time, but only if you really wish it. Bye.